another management strategy that Ontario farmers can use to increase grain protein in their wheat crop are late nitrogen applications or, or what's called colloquially protein boosts where a farmer is applying nitrogen much later in the season than they typically would between the booting and heading stage of wheat. Now this practice has been validated for Ontario conditions. Ontario data shows that for the same amount of nitrogen um, compared to it being applied earlier during your typical nitrogen timing, split applying, applying some of that nitrogen between booting and heading, these protein boost timings, will increase green protein by 0.5 to 1%. So this is a, an effective strategy, although I should say it is highly variable, its effect, effectiveness from year to year, particularly in years where it's very dry post protein boost application. So you apply nitrogen and then you have a bit of a dry spell. These, these protein boosts don't work as effectively, but in general, it has been validated in Ontario, this strategy. So why do protein boosts work? One reason is because that nitrogen application is occurring much later in the season once yield uh, potential of that crop has been already determined. So what I've, what I've told you previously is that the main yield component responsible for yield potential in a wheat crop is the number of heads per square meter, which is a function of the number of viable tillers. And that yield component is determined um, prior to this timing of protein boost application. And so protein boosts generally do not increase yield. They're just going to increase grain protein. So you're not going to have this dilution effect where you're applying nitrogen, you're increasing yield, and you're also increasing grain protein. No, with a late nitrogen protein boost application, the timing is such that you're not increasing yield. You're just increasing grain protein. Or, or have the potential to. I've already said that post emphesis, after pollination, during grain fill, nitrogen uptake is going to decline in most crops, actually almost all field crops, because the roots are being progressively starved of carbohydrates, right? That, that, that photosynthesate, photosynthate sugars, it's going to the grain. However, even though total nitrogen uptake is declining, a major proportion, 70 plus percent of that nitrogen that's being taken up is going to the grain. And so while nitrogen uptake during grain fill is, is declining, a greater proportion of that nitrogen is going right to the grain as opposed to the leaves or the roots or the stem or, or wherever else. Also, a late or protein boost in application is making it easier less costly energetically for that crop to take up nitrogen. Right? A protein boost application is, uh, at least in theory, um, increasing the concentration of nitrogen in the top three, four inches of the soil profile when it's being applied. That's where most of a wheat roots, uh, that's where most of a wheat's roots are located. So you're increasing the concentration of nitrogen around that root system and making it easier to, for that crop to access that nitrogen increasing um, nitrogen uptake. Now, because root, um, root e efficiency declines during grain fill, there's been this interest in, in foliarly applying nitrogen to increase grain protein. In other words, we know the root system might not be taking up nitrogen efficiently. We know that if we get a dry spell after the end application, we might not have good nitrogen uptake. So let's apply that nitrogen to the crop canopy, to the leaves, to get a protein boost. So we don't have to rely on, you know, the soil root system. That is, um, the data suggests that this is a, a pretty big roll of the dice for a number of reasons. Number one, studies show that even foliarly applied nitrogen, uh, with foliarly applied nitrogen applications, most of that nitrogen is being taken up by the roots, right? That, that nitrogen is staying on the leaf, it's in the canopy, and once it rains, that nitrogen is gonna drip down into the soil, and 99% of nitrogen uptake from foliarly applied nitrogen is going to, is going to occur from that, from that process. It's going to still be taken up by the roots. Okay, so, so that's one, one aspect with foliar applied nitrogen. 
The other problem is the possibility of leaf burn. Okay, leaves as organs are not really designed to take up substantial quantities of nitrogen. So if you're applying uh, a large enough dose of nitrogen, large enough to try to get a protein boost, there's a possibility of leaf burn, where essentially that leaf senesces, it stops being, um, it stops producing sugars, it stops photosynthesizing, and therefore you're going to have reduced um, a reduced yield. You're actually going to lower average kernel weight with a with a foliarly applied nitrogen. So, paradoxically, right, if you apply nitrogen, you get leaf burn, you lower your yield because you have less photosynthesis occurring. Well, your green protein is going to go up. So, foliarly applied nitrogen can actually increase green protein by reducing yield, by reducing the starch or the carbohydrate content of that kernel. And that's not really a strategy that anyone would recommend. So how can we increase grain protein without reducing yield? Really, that is, that's what we're looking at. Another way that farmers can perhaps manage grain protein or grain quality in a wheat crop while increasing yield potential is the use of fungicides along with relatively high nitrogen fertilizer rates. This synergy between fungicide and nitrogen fertilizer has been observed in Ontario, as well as in many other area, uh, humid areas of the world uh, where wheat is grown. So what do I mean by synergy between these two crop inputs? Let's go to the graph on the right here. This is data uh, from a trial done in Ontario. This is one of the sites uh, of, the, of the sites that was um, um, part of this study. In this graph on the x-axis here, you can see applied fertilizer nitrogen rate. And on the y-axis, you can see uh, wheat yield. And this is a graph of yield response to fertilizer nitrogen applied. This dotted line here is yield response in the untreated control, UTC. And this solid line up here is yield response in the treatment that receive fungicides at um, the T1, T2, and T3 timing, so in-season fun foliar fungicide applications. What we can see is that as nitrogen rate increases, the yield difference between the untreated control and the control with foliar fungicide applied increases. In other words, we have a synergy between fungicide and end fertilizer use. Um, you know, if you expect fungicide to increase yield by one ton per hectare, for example, and you, your increase in end fertilizer to also increase wheat yield by one ton per hectare, if you use a fungicide and increase end fertilizer at the same time, you won't get a two ton per hectare yield response. You're going to get a three ton per hectare yield response, for example, right? There's a benefit, a synergy, an added benefit of these two crop inputs together. Now let's explore a little bit about what's going on here. A proven way to increase wheat yield without reducing grain protein is the use of fungicides in combination with high nitrogen fertilizer rates. There's a synergy that exists and has been demonstrated in Ontario and elsewhere between these two crop inputs. So mechanistically, what is behind this synergy, this positive effect between using nitrogen fertilizer in combination with fungicides, foliarly applied fungicides, typically applied at the T3 timing where you're trying to target the head of the wheat plant as well as the flag leaf, the, the leaves in the upper canopy. First, let's talk about the impact of fungal infection on nitrogen metabolism in a wheat crop. We have to first distinguish between biotrophic and necrotrophic pathogens. Biotrophic pathogens, such as leaf rusts and powdery mildew, in effect trick that wheat plant. They infect living host cells without triggering that plant's um, infection defense system. They're kind of like these stealth invaders that can live in host cells, sucking out nutrients, including nitrogen, without the crop actually knowing that that's going on. Remember that a wheat crop or any grain crop is getting its nitrogen from one of two sources, nitrogen remobilization or concurrent nitrogen uptake. Remember that for nitrogen remobilization, 
a major reservoir of that vegetative nitrogen that's going to go to the grain during grain fill over the grain fill period is in the leaves themselves. About half of the crop nitrogen at the start of grain fill is in the leaves. So if you have a fung fungal disease, it's continuously sucking out that nitrogen uh, for its own use, you are going to reduce re the amount of nitrogen that can be remobilized to the grain. So for biotrophic pathogens, you're reducing that pool of nitrogen that the grain can use because th that fungi is using that nitrogen for itself. And so you are going to reduce that, um, the amount of nitrogen being remobilized to the grain. That means that with a rust or powdery mildew infection, generally you are going to see a decline in grain protein. And so if you use a fungicide to control leaf rust or powdery mildew, you will generally have an increase in yield combined with an increase in grain protein or no change in grain protein. In other words, you're increasing the amount of nitrogen available via remobilization by using a fungicide when it's um, a, a biotrophic pathogen, right? You're preventing that pathogen from taking, drawing away nitrogen from that uh, pool of remobilizable nitrogen. Necrotrophic pathogens, such as septoria leaf spot, kill host cells before invading. They're not trying to stealthily infect plant cells and steal nutrients without killing them. They're just straight up killing those cells and robbing the nutrients from those cells. So just like biotrophic pathogens, necrotrophic pathogens are also going to reduce grain protein by reducing the amount of nitrogen available for remobilization, taking away nitrogen in the leaves or, or in the stem or wherever the uh, infection is occurring, stealing that nitrogen from the crop and using it for its own you know, fungal ends. Leaf spots or necrotrophic pathogens um, are notorious for reducing test weight in wheat, causing kernel shriveling, essentially reducing um, kernel weight. And they do that by uh, reducing photosynthesis during grain fill. And so while all um, fungal infections, necrotrophic or biotrophic, are going to reduce yields, uh, when septoria leaf spot is, is, is pressure is high, you're, you end up with very low quality wheat, very, very small shriveled up kernels. So again, it's somewhat of a paradox, but septoria leaf spot, while yes, it reduces uh, nitrogen available for remobilization, it reduces yield more, it reduces kernel weight more. And so often grain protein will increase in crops with septoria leaf spot. Now, other quality parameters, especially test weight, will decline. So septoria leaf spot doesn't increase grain, grain quality overall, but it does increase grain protein uh, concentration. And so if you apply a fungicide to uh, fields infested with septoria leaf spot, you will control septoria leaf spot, increase yield, but you will have um, a, a reduction in grain protein. And so often studies might show that the control of septoria leaf spot or tan spot in a wheat crop will reduce grain protein concentrations. And that is because fungicides are going to prevent that kernel shriveling and reduction in test weight. Okay, so let's look at what happens to wheat nitrogen metabolism uh, with and without a fun fungicide under uh, uh, fungal uh, disease pressure. In, in this case, in this study, I'm showing you this was a um, leaf blotch uh, inf infection. This was a study done in the UK uh, using a combination of soft and hard winter wheat varieties. And I just want to go through this table. Uh, I, I summarized the data in, in this study, Gooding et al. 2005, just to kind of highlight uh, a couple of things. So this uh, is a bunch of data from this trial. Let's first look at the first row of this table, grain nitrogen. So grain nitrogen content, grams of nitrogen per meter squared. Uh, without a fungicide versus with a fungicide, we have a increase, a significant increase in total grain nitrogen content. So remember, grain nitrogen comes from one of two sources. How is fungi fungicide af affecting the supply of, of nitrogen from these two sources? Let's go to the next row and find out. So this is the amount of nitrogen remobilized to the grain from the stem, the leaves, you know, all vegetative tissues, the, the leaf sheaths, etc. 
And with a fungicide, you have a greater amount of nitrogen being remobilized to the grain. And this is a pure effect of preventing that fungus, uh, that fungal infestation from robbing nitrogen from the plant, preserving that nitrogen, allowing it to be remobilized to the grain. The second source, concurrent nitrogen uptake during grain fill. Also, the fungicide induced a significant increase in nitrogen uptake during grain fill. We're going to talk a little bit about what's going on here, but it seems that fungicides are allowing that crop to take up more nitrogen during the grain fill period. Now, if we look at internal nitrogen efficiency of these two wheat crops, right, with and without fungicide, the grams of dry matter accumulated by maturity per gram of nitrogen taken up by the crop, it is significantly higher in the with fungicide treatment. In other words, crops with fungicide sprayed on them are using nitrogen much more efficiently uh, in terms of creating dry matter. Now, this is already beginning to help us understand the synergy between nitrogen fertilizer and, and fungicide use, that uh, wheat crops can use nitrogen more efficiently uh, if they're under disease pressure and a fungicide is applied versus not applied. So, because this was, in this particular study, a leaf blot infect infestation, that was the, the fungal in infestation in, in this study, grain protein declined. Uh, with the use of fungicides, but it declined by about 10%, whereas grain yield increased by about 30%. Moreover, uh, without fungicides, you had much larger, sharper reductions in test weight. So, so the use of fungicide, while in this case it did not increase grain protein concentration, looking at this internal inefficiency, we can begin to understand why we have this synergy between nitrogen fertilizer and fungicide use in winter wheat. Fungicides have four main effects on wheat yield and nitrogen metabolism or uptake. In other words, there's four pathways responsible for this synergy between uh, nitrogen fertilizer rates and, and fungicide, foliar fungicide applications. So, so we have this increase in internal nitrogen use efficiency with, with, with fung fungicide, foliar fungicide applications. In other words, we're increasing total dry matter accumulation uh, per every gram of nitrogen taken up by that crop. What, what, there's four pathways by which this is occurring. The first, and this is something that uh, you may know already, is the increase in flag leaf longevity due to fungicide effects. So um, fungicide use generally increases the duration of, 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 the green leaf, of the green leaf area and increases the duration of the green fill period. So typically, uh, one way you can measure the duration of, of green fill is to look at flag leaf green area percentage, right? The percentage of that flag leaf that is green and photosynthetically active. And you look at the number of days it takes for that crop, uh, for that flag leaf to reach 37% green leaf area. Okay, below 37% green leaf area, photosynthetic efficiency is much, much reduced. Okay, so here, uh, this is data from the UK, days after flag leaf emergence from zero to 80 days after flag leaf. Fl flag leaf green area, the proportion of that flag leaf that's green. To get to 37% flag leaf green area, without fungicides, it takes 57 days after uh, flag leaf emergence. And with a fungicide, it takes 67 days uh, to reach 37% flag leaf green area. So we have roughly a 10 day increase in the duration of, of an active canopy. And, and that uh, will often increase yields. Now, um, this beneficial effect of fungicides on the duration of, of, of the canopy uh, photosynth photosynthesis efficiency or the duration of, of um, flag, flag leaf green area is contingent on several things. First, the magnitude of this benefit is, is dependent on the severity of the fungal infestation. So as the magnitude of, or as the severity of that fungal infestation increases, this difference between fungicide, no fungicide and no fungicide 
increases as well. That said, even uh, when fungal infestation severity is relatively low, um, there will still be a benefit to using a fungicide in terms of flag leaf longevity. It just won't be as great. Um, some other, some other uh, factors that will impact the effect of fungicides on, on uh, flag leaf longevity is the occurrence of drought during grain fill. So if you have a crop that is very water stressed during grain fill, the, the flag leaf is going to senesce quicker irrespective of the use of fungicides. Now, finally, there's a developmental limit to how long that flag leaf is going to stay green. So depending on the variety, there's a genetic limit on how long that flag leaf will, will stay green and not senesce because senescence of that flag leaf is controlled by um, crop genetics. And so it's going to vary from variety to variety, how long that flag leaf can stay green, what's its genetic potential. The second pathway or effect that fungicides have on, on wheat yield is that they increase potential kernel weight and they increase potential kernel weight independent of the if effect of fungicides on flag leaf area duration. This is a completely separate effect. Okay, what do I mean? So with the use of foliar fungicides, you're, you're increasing the p maximum potential weight of that kernel. So if you go early grain fill, mid grain fill, you can me measure um, potential kernel weight, not actual kernel weight, but what's its potential. And that's a function of, you know, to keep things simple, you know, how much moisture is in that kernel, how plump that kernel is by mid grain fill, that, that can tell you what's its potential kernel weight. Now fungicides uh, have been observed to increase uh, potential kernel weight. Okay, so by mid grain fill, fungicides have an impact, foliar fungicides have an impact on potential kernel weight. That does not mean, that will not necessarily translate to actual kernel weight. But if you combine an increase in potential kernel weight, right, the, the, the number of endosperm cells, the number of sites within that kernel available for reserve deposition, starch deposition, you combine that effect of fungicides with the increase in canopy longevity, then you will have generally an increase in final kernel weight. And you can see that again, this is data from another UK study that fungicides do not increase the rate of grain fill. They increase the duration of grain fill and they increase maximum kernel weight that can be achieved. The third pathway responsible for the synergy between fungicide and nitrogen use in winter wheat crops is this yield component complementarity between these two crop inputs. So you remember way, way back, you know, a thousand years ago at the beginning of this lecture, when I said that the um, yield component most responsive to nitrogen fertilizer and responsible for the increase in yield due to nitrogen fertilizer is the number of viable heads per square meter, the number of productive tillers. Now, as the number of heads per unit area increases, we generally observe a reduction in average kernel weight. So that crop has a lot more seeds or kernels to deal with, average seed weight is going to decline slightly. Now, I've also just mentioned that fungicides increase mean kernel weight by influencing potential kernel weight and the duration of the grain fill period. And so we have this complementarity, you know, nitrogen rate will increase the number of, of heads per meter squared and fungicides are going to ensure that those kernels are not going to have a reduction in kernel weight. So we have this yield component complementarity between these two crop inputs. So the fourth and final, I promise you, the final uh, pathway by which fungicides uh, synergize with nitrogen fertilizer rates is the way by which fungicides influence the two main sources of grain nitrogen. That is nitrogen remobilized from vegetative tissues and nitrogen uptake uh, concurrent with grain fill. So you might have seen this conceptual model before. Let me get my pointer out. Okay, so how do, how do fungicides impact the two sources of green nitrogen? Nitrogen taken up from the roots during green fill, nitrogen remobilized primarily from the canopy. So I've just told you that fung fungicides prolong the duration of canopy greenness. They, they extend the duration of green fill, they keep that canopy 
canopy green for longer. And so you might expect that fungicides are going to reduce remobilization just from those two, from, the, from that pathway or that impact. But fungicides do two things to actually increase nitrogen remobilization, which is consistent with the data in that table that I showed you a couple of slides earlier. First, fungicides reduce the robbing of leaf nitrogen by that fungal infection, by that pathogen. So, so you're pre preventing that, that nitrogen from being robbed. Number two, um, <clears throat> fungicides increase the rate of nitrogen remobilization at the end of grain fill. And so by keeping that canopy green, greener for longer, you're not necessarily reducing the amount of leaf nitrogen that will make its way to the grain. You're just reducing um, or you're extending the, the amount of time that it's going to take for most of that nitrogen to be remobilized to the grain. So with fungicides, we see a marked increase in the amount of nitrogen remobilized, you know, at the growth stage 80 plus. Um, so typically, while the grain will not get any larger after growth stage 80, dry matter accumulation is complete, it will continue to accumulate nitrogen as that canopy senesces. So fungicides do not uh, necessarily reduce nitrogen remobilization, or rather the amount of nitrogen remobilized to the grain. <clears throat> Number two, fungicides allow more carbon to be allocated to the roots during grain fill, increasing post-anthesis nitrogen uptake. In other words, the amount of nitrogen taken up during grain fill. Let's think about it, right? The roots need that carbon to take up nitrogen. And to the extent that that canopy senesces, um, the, the, the pie or the pool of available carbon that has to be split between the grain and the roots is going to continuously shrink. So by using a fungicide, you're preserving green leaf area, you're reducing the competition for carbohydrate or photosynthate or sugars or assimilates, whatever you want to call it. You're reducing that competition between the grain and the roots during grain fill. And because you're reducing that competition, you're providing the roots with more carbohydrates to take up more N uh, during grain fill. And so this is, you know, whatever, I've been talking for 40 minutes. This is probably more in depth than, than you've wanted to go um, in, into the, the mechanisms behind the synergy that we often observe between uh, um, uh, wheat nit nitrogen rates and, and fungicides in wheat.